Okay, so next up, we look at reversing the Euclidean algorithm, and this is where we get some more interesting things that can come from this, and this is Bezu's identity. Now, Bezu's identity, well, I don't think we need to know this by name, states that there exist integers a and b such that the greatest common divisor of a and b is equal to a multiplied by some integer x plus b multiplied by some integer y. And this is kind of cool, right? Because I'm going to ask you in a second to pause the video to try and do this without using Bezu's identity, without using the reverse Euclidean algorithm. To try and think of a value of x and a value of y, naturally one of these is going to be positive and one of them is going to be negative, that when you multiply 306 by that number and you add 657 multiplied by a different integer, that you get the answer 9, because your trial and error is going to be very, very difficult. It's not going to be easy to find out how this works, uh, to find those values for x and y. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the Euclidean algorithm in reverse and use repeated substitution in order to be able to tackle it. So on the previous example, we found out that the GCD of 306 and 657 was 9. That was this one that we just did here. And what we're going to try and do is find integers x and y to make 306 and 657, those two numbers that were a and b, x and y, so that it is equal to the GCD of 306 and 657. Now this working out that I've got right here is exactly the same that I've got here apart from I didn't put a plus zero at this end bit. I don't know if I want that plus zero there or not. I'll probably remove that in the PDF because I don't think it's very necessary at all. Um, and so what I'm going to do is do a reversal of this. Now I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to work up and kind of have them sort of rearranged so that what you do is you're going to make uh, the remainder the subject of this, the remainder the subject of this, and the remainder the subject of this because the remainder is 9 here and 9 is the thing that I want to have in terms of 306 and 657. So I'm going to do these little arrows to kind of come across. I like to work from the bottom and go up, okay? I don't know why, it's just how I do it and if I was in the classroom in front of you it's how I'd ask you to do it. So 9 is equal to 45 minus 1 lot of 36, okay? And then I'm going to rearrange this one so that I make the remainder the subject. 36 is 306 minus 6 lots of 45. And 45 is equal to, uh, what is it equal to? Uh, 657 minus 2 lots of 306. So what's going to happen is I'm going to take this 36 and I'm going to substitute it, not with a wobbly line like that. I'm going to substitute it. Oh my God, it's getting even worse. I'm going to substitute it in there. And I'm going to take this 45 and I'm going to substitute it. I don't know why my hand is doing such wobbly lines. I'm going to substitute it inside that 45 that we have. So you start off with this one that's at the bottom and you kind of work your way up that list. So I'm going to start off that 9 is equal to 45 minus 36, minus 1 lot of 36. So it's going to be minus this thing. Well, if I'm going to subtract this thing, it is going to become a plus 306. And it's going to become, why is it going to become a plus 306? That's a load of rubbish. Sorry, I'm subtracting one of these. So I'm going to subtract 306. But because I'm subtracting negative 6 lots of 45, I'm going to change it to a plus 6 lots of 45. So that I now have 9 is equal to, well, I've got 1 lot of 45 and 6 lots of 45. That is 7 lots of 45 minus 306. So I've already used this substitution. Now I'm going to use this substitution, and I'm going to put that 45 into this equation that we've got. So it's not going exactly into this one but it's going to go, I, I like doing it kind of working from the bottom upwards, hence this arrow that I have. So 9 is equal to 7 lots of this. So that is going to be 7 lots of 657 minus 14 lots of 306. And I've got the minus 306 that remained afterwards as well, which gives me that 9 is equal to, and I'm going to write it in their order, there's minus 14 times 306 minus 306, that means I have minus 15 lots of 306 plus 7 lots of 657. Hence, x is the coefficient of 306 and y is the coefficient of 657. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So let's actually check it on the calculator. I'm going to do minus 15 times 306 plus 7 times 657 
and we get the answer nine. Now, trial and error, you would have <laughs> taken a long time to find this because those are the only, not the only integers. Are they the only integers? Yeah, I think those are the only integers that are going to make this work. So you're going to notice me doing this quite a few times in these next two examples. In fact, I'm going to do this one and then I'm going to want you to have a go at this one here. So it says use the Euclidean algorithm to find x and y, which are integers, such that the GCD of 143 and 252 is equal to 143x plus 252y. So this is like a two-part question. The first one is to do the Euclidean, and the Euclidean you use to find the GCD and to do it in reverse. And then the second thing is we're going to do the reverse Euclidean to find Euclidean to find x and y. For now, this is just like a cool thing, but you're going to see why it has some uses later on in this chapter. So let's start off doing the Euclidean algorithm. It's going to be 252 is equal to, let's do 252 divided by 143. Yeah, it's just going to be one, isn't it? It's one lot of 143. 252 minus 143 is 109. So we've got that remainder of 109. So the 143 shifts across. It's going to be one lot of 109. The remainder is those subtracted, which is 34. Now 109 is going to be, how many 34s will go in there? So it is three lots of 34. So I'll do 109 minus three lots of 34. That is a seven. So there is a remainder of seven. And so 34, well, that's going to be four lots of seven. That's 28 plus six. And so then we get that seven is equal to, uh, what have we got? Four lots of seven. Um, no, seven is equal to the six is now coming across. It is equal to one lot of six plus one. And so six is equal to six lots of one plus zero. So in this case, the GCD of 143 and 252 is equal to 1. Now I'm just going to quickly check this because before you go ahead you don't want to do the rest of the question wrong so I'm going to use that part on the calculator I showed you. I'm going to do that shift fact. So I'll do 143, I'll press equals and then I'll do shift fact. So 143 is 11 times 13 and 252 is 252 shift fact. It is 2 squared times 3 squared times 7. 2 squared times 3 squared times 7. So just by looking at it like this, they have no common factors. So we know that they are co-prime. Remember we said they're co-prime if they equal 1 that we have like this. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to do the reverse Euclidean, which we're going to do on this side. So I'm going to make, don't need to do it on the bottom one, but this one I'm going to make 1 the subject. So 1 is equal to 7 minus 1 lot of 6. 6 is equal to 34 minus 4 lots of 7. 7 is equal to 109 minus 3 lots of 34. 34 is equal to 143 minus 1 lot of 109 and 109 is equal to 252 minus 1 lot of 143. So then I continue working on this one using the things that are from above. So 1 is equal to 7 minus one of these. So that's going to be 7 minus 34 plus 4 lots of 7 because when you subtract this, you get plus it. So I now have that one equals five lots of seven minus 34. Now I know that seven is equal to 109 minus this. So if I'm doing five lots of this, I can say that it is equal to five lots of 109 minus 15 lots of 34 minus 34. Notice we never actually evaluate these things. We always keep it in terms of the numbers in the question. So this is 5 times 109 minus 16 lots of 34. So that's 5 times 109 minus 16 lots of 34. Okay, I've used this one, I've used this one, I've used this one. Looks like I now need to use this one. So I'm going to do 16 minus 16 lots of 34. So that's 5 lots of 109 
Now, if I'm doing minus 16 lots of this, there's going to be minus 16 of 143. But there's going to be a minus 16 of minus these. So it's going to be plus 16 lots of 109. So 1 is equal to 21 lots of 109 minus 16 lots of 143. So my last thing is to do 21 lots of this thing that we have at the top. So this gives me 1 equals 21 lots of 252. So it's 21 lots of 252 uh, minus 21 lots of 143. And I've still got that minus 16 lots of 143 from the previous line. Now I'm just going to give myself a little bit more space and take off that I've done that. So let's drag all of this up a bit. Hopefully I can squeeze it in here. It looks like I can. So for the 252, 1 is 21 lots of 252. And I'm going to be minusing, what's that, minus 37 lots of 143. Now we should check the answer for this. So on my calculator, I'm going to do 21 lots of 252 minus 37 lots of 143, and we do get 1, which is what we were looking for. So we can answer this and say what x is equal to. Well, x goes with 143, so make sure you say it's negative 37, and y goes with 252, so it is 21. Those are our answers for this. Now, I think you should probably pause the video and try this one yourself, okay, because it's pretty similar, and actually the numbers are easier to do than the previous example, so come back after you've tried this one. Okay, part A of the question, use the Euclidean algorithm to show that they are relatively prime or co-prime. In other words, we want to show that the GCD of 49 and 60 is equal to 1. So I'm just going to start off. 60 is 1 lot of 49 plus 11. 49, well, that's 4 lots of 11. That's 44 plus 5 for the remainder. 11 is 2 lots of 5 plus 1. And 5 is 5 lots of 1 plus 0. So there's our GCD that we have there. We just need to say, hence, GCD of 49 and 60 equals 1. So 49 and 60 are relatively prime. Now for part B, it doesn't tell us to do the reverse Euclidean, but we can see that we have 49 and 60 being equal to their GCD that we have there. So I'm going to, I'll say it's just part B, but I'm going to do all of these guys rearranged. Start from the bottom. 1 is 11 minus 2 lots of 5. 5 is 49 minus 4 lots of 11. And 11 is 60 minus 1 lot of 49. So we're going to start with the bottom one. So 1 equals 11 minus 2 lots of 5. Now, I'm just going to go straight and say it's 11 minus 2 of these. So that's minus 2 lots of 49. And if I'm minusing 2 lots of this, it becomes a plus 8 lots of 11. So I've now used this one. Let's simplify that. So I've got 1 lot of 11 and 8 lots of 11. That's 9 lots of 11 minus 2 lots of 49. And then I'll use the last one, which I'm going to tick off, that 11 is this. So 1 is equal to 9 lots of these. 9 lots of 60 minus 9 lots of 49. And we've still got that minus 2 lots of 49 from before. So 1 is equal to 9 lots of 60 minus 11 lots of 49. So we can use that just to find out what x and y are equal to. Well, x is the one that goes with the 49, so it's negative 11 and y therefore is 9. So let's just double check we've got it right by typing it in. So that's 9 times 60 minus 11 times 49, and it is 1, which is what we were hoping for, so we know we've got that all correct. Now the only difference for part c, when we want to find integers p and q to make this true, well 1 has been multiplied by 5, so q, uh, um, x must be multiplied by 5 for p, and y must be multiplied by 5 to get what the value of q is. It kind of just makes sense, intuitive sense. If you make that bit five times bigger, the 49 and the 60 are staying the same, so it must be the x and the y that are getting five times bigger. So p is five lots of negative 11, which is negative 55, and q is five lots of nine, which is 45. And again, I'll just show you that this works on the calculator. So I will do minus 55 multiplied by uh, 49, 
plus 45, which is Q multiplied by 60, and it now is equal to 5 that we've got there. So you can always use the calculator to check these things, um, but you don't get the method marks for that. And exercise 1B that we have now means you can do all of these questions. You'll notice by uh, they don't do this in the textbook. They don't kind of write the substitution somewhere else. I just think it makes so much more sense to have it written here because the reverse substitution process becomes so much easier. And you'll notice that that's why I'm kind of using them in this direction as I tick them off. And same here, I use them in this direction as I tick them off. This was a much, much bigger example with some more complex kind of... Um, substitution. So go and do exercise 1b and then it kind of takes a bit of a swerve, goes to a different area with some modular arithmetic.